Well, the winner of this uh, event four years ago. I have to keep remembering to say four years ago, the university had normally every two years, but of course the COVID-19 pandemic has played around with the schedule rather badly over the last few years. But uh, the, uh, the victor four years ago was Japanese. Indeed, they've had the uh, rule of the roost a lot of the time. They've won four of the last six titles. Yuka Suzuki following off the back of the victories by Yuki Maneshi and uh, Mai Tosuda, Chisato Saito. And you can even go back to 2003 when uh, Machi Tanaka also won. It's only four times since 1997 when the marathon became a half marathon at the World University Games, but Japan have not won. Off we go then. Half marathon underway. These women have uh, times of around about between uh, 111 and 120 as their personal best. But we saw yesterday with the walks that uh, they had, you could add about 10 minutes to uh, their personal best running or walking yesterday in those conditions. And he would suggest with 90% humidity today, that's the, uh, the most that we've had all week in uh, Chengdu in the athletics. The one uh, blessing is that it is overcast this morning, so uh, not the worst of the sun getting in the way. It looks like uh, awfully uh, Melody Julien of France has uh, made a burst. There she is. Julia goes to Montpellier University. And she does have a pretty good personal best of 111.42. It has to be said that uh, there's a little bit of a, a discrepancy in her figures because it says her season's best is better than her personal best. So either that means it's wrong or she's uh, set her uh, personal best so recently that it hasn't clocked onto the system. But she has decided to go off at quite a clip. Well, she's uh, 24 years old. She's been in uh, considerable action this season on 10K on the roads, half marathon, even a marathon in Prague in May, which she did in 2.29, just over. She's been to uh, quite a few championships uh, since uh, 2021. Indeed, she uh, made her international debut as a uh, youth athlete back in 2018 in cross country. She's uh, been to a couple of those uh, European Championship marathon where she was 14th last year. World Championship, she also uh, went to that as well and uh, finished in the top 60. And she's clearly feeling good because that's a very early break that she's made. They do one loop here of uh, one kilometer with an extra few meters so that they can make up the half marathon distance before heading out onto the main course, which goes around the lake. Five kilometers long. They do that four times before heading back to the finish line here. So you can see if you're watching yesterday that they are going the other way around the course to the walkers. A couple of Germans in the uh, field wearing the yellow. You can see them on the uh, left-hand side. Esther Jakobitz from the University of Cologne and Sophie Kretschmer who goes to the Anhalt University of Applied Sciences. Meanwhile, well, uh, Julien is uh, still going on her way and she'll be heading off onto the main course in just a few moments' time. It's a lovely park. Area. There's five parks here. 
to Man Made Lakes. It's called the uh, Fulongi Lake. You'll see, hopefully, at various different points uh, when we're going around it. It's the uh, Baihu River that uh, flows through them. There's a few canals that uh, joins them up as well. So then early days at the moment in this uh, marathon, not taking too seriously yet the, uh, the break by the French women. And I think I even saw her take a little uh, look behind her there and perhaps a little surprise that they are quite so far behind her let's not forget you know this is this is very humid it might not feel as hot today as it did yesterday but the humidity will take an effect on them and uh, maybe the French woman has gone off a little bit too enthusiastically and might suffer later there are drink stations around the course there is mist stations as well as we saw yesterday for the, uh, the walks they've all been moved away from here to uh, elsewhere on the course there's ice stations also and of course, there is the individual feeding stations as well, which are absolutely essential for uh, the athletes because it's got their own personalized hydration requirements inside them. So then on the left-hand side, you can see uh, some of the Japanese running along their team of Rio Inayaka, Saki Harada, and Hikaru Kitagawa. We go to the Osaka Gakuin University, Meijo University and Osaka University of Arts, respectively. And at the moment, they are not in the slightest bit interested in going after the French uh, rabbit out in front. So then here we are then, we're out on the first of the uh, four laps. It was burning hot sunshine a couple of days ago when we were doing the reconnaissance of the uh, course. So different uh, feeling now. It's got quite a heavy stride on her, the uh, the French woman. Sort of really pounds along. It's the other French woman uh, on the right hand side of your screen. That is a uh, Mathilde Seneschal. 25 years old, who goes to the University of Jean Moulin in Lyon. A couple of Indian uh, women in this, in fact, three Indian women, one of which you can see just there. We'll come back to them in a moment. So as you look at it, the, uh, the park is on the left-hand side of your screen, on the right-hand side there of uh, Julien, the athlete running along there. All of that area contains the uh, pre-event warm-up area, the uh, doping control media sections. The Australian uh, walking team yesterday had an ice bath set up. I'm assuming it's still there for today's half marathon. of Australians are running today in the men's we'll see them a, a bit later there aren't actually any Australian women by the looks of it though uh, in today's race two men are uh, Taylor Bagley and uh, Timothy Vincent Harry and Tim as they introduced themselves to me on the bus a couple of days ago He'll be warming up at the moment, back at the start. Line with the rest of the men's uh, entrance as the women are already hard at it. Early morning. It's about uh, 10 past 7 local time. So then the first of the turns. two and uh, half kilometers into this race the first timing section will be at 5k then at 10 15 and 20 
Julien has been sucked back into the pack again. See there, she went off uh, really hard and fast to start with. And she's, uh, in fact, excuse me, that was actually a, a replay of the first part. So she's taking advantage of the first of the miss stations. There are a couple of them on uh, either side of the course. Saw a lot of the women in the walking events yesterday actually uh, trying to avoid the uh, the miss stations. They were just they didn't want to go right the way through them. But uh, Julia, they're quite happy to get a drenching. She's uh, running there, the park with the lake right in the middle of it. As I said, it's not just one lake; there are several in there. It's a rather nice place to go for a walk, to be honest with you. athletes though will be spending their time running around it so then the tall figure of Esther Jakobitz the German is the woman that you can see in picture 25 years old who goes to University in Cologne up front though it's the French woman. We're six hours ahead of French time here. So, uh, not sure how many people will be watching in the middle of the night. Still going along quite well, but we're only three kilometers in. So, uh, 10 minutes of racing, nearly 11. And we'll have spent the whole of last week uh, watching their hydration levels. They don't just do it on the day, it's a, a whole process of uh, hydrating the week before. It's particularly important when you take into consideration the very specific conditions that they're running in today in Asia. Asia, always very, very humid in the summer. We saw it in uh, the Beijing Olympics and the World Championships that they had in 2015. Osaka was the same back in 2007, the Olympic Games a couple of years ago as well in Japan. So then with the women already out on the course and uh, running, the men are indeed gathering at the start line. Very smiling figure of Ma Yu Li from the uh, Shangxi Normal University just being introduced to the crowd. Next one is the Estonian Leonid Latsapov. Goes to the Free University of Berlin in Germany. Does the 25-year-old Estonian. The front Japanese is uh, Kotaro Shinokara. He goes to the uh, Komazawa University. And uh, he's one of the fastest men in the field as well. He's not far off breaking an hour for the uh, half marathon. So uh, he will be one of the men to watch in this race. First ever gold medal in this uh, event when it was a marathon was uh, a Soviet Union athlete, you know, Ivan Kovalchuk, beats uh, American uh, Herbert Willis and uh, Georgi Bereza of uh, Romania. And there is the list of uh, this year's hopefuls. Like I said, uh, Shinohara amongst the favorites, but also his Japanese teammate, Rishi Yoshida, is another man who's. Um, gone well he's got a almost identical personal best to his teammate there are three strong Japanese in this uh, event and they will be the favorites for the team event the Chinese can't match them quite as much but uh, you never know the uh, home advantage as the crowd steadily builds on this Sunday morning might well lift them and help them through So then seven teams from China, Hong Kong, Japan, South Korea, South Africa, Turkey, and Uganda. You're going to have to find out why they've been spelling Turkey that way, the, uh, the way that the Turks spell it, weren't, uh, the English spelling for everybody else. I 
think everybody is ready. Whilst there is an Indian uh, team in the team event for the women, the, uh, there are not enough men from India to be able to uh, do the same thing. The only Indian there you can see in the black, Aaron Ratod from the uh, Salapur University. He's got a 1.06.44 personal best. South Africans do have a team with Gamed, Kagima, Malanga, and Thigani. Off we go then. The men's race is underway here at the 2023 World University Games. Good field. 40 entries into this race. And over 30 in the women's race. So it's a, a deep field. It'll be interesting to see how they all run. The uh, Ugandans are always uh, worth watching. Uganda have risen to become a real powerhouse of East African uh, running in recent years and have uh, rather knocked Kenya and Ethiopia off their perches somewhat in recent major championships of the World Championships, Olympic Games. Of course, they're a major force in the Commonwealth Games. Uh, assuming the Commonwealth Games actually does take place, let's hope it does. Because of uh, running major championships is uh, a real issue in world sport at the moment. The Chinese have uh, really thrown themselves into it for the World University Games. Everything is uh, of Olympic standard. The amount of advertising has been absolutely phenomenal. Athletics is often accused of not advertising itself. Of course, this is a multi-event uh, games, not just an athletics championships. But the sheer amount of advertising and the imagination and the different ways that they've been doing it is uh, been uh, is quite something. If you are in this city, you cannot miss the fact that the World University Games is taking place. So then the Ugandans already huddling towards the front. Isaac Chalimo, Sam Cheptegei, Brian Wangi, all there, all three of them tucked in in the middle. Man, you can see leading though in the blue of Oman is uh, Imad Al Farsi, who goes to the Military Technical College. He's a 22 year old with a personal best of about 107, one hour, seven minutes. So I don't think he's going to be there at the end, but he's grabbing his little uh, moment of uh, prominence at the start of this race. Should watch the teams try to uh, work together, but uh, depends on how they feel, to be honest with you. We've seen in the past that. Uh, Effectively strong teams in major championships have not always managed to work together. Ethiopia famously in the 2012 Olympic Games fell apart and had no finishes in the men's race. Really looking forward to seeing how this works out because you've got some genuine teams here with South Africa, Uganda, Japan, China. We'll see how the strategy works out as the race unfolds. Generally, uh, they, you won't see too many people running off. It was a bit unusual that the French woman has gone off so hard at the beginning because usually in marathon racing, half marathon racing, particularly marathon racing, the longer distance, the first half of the race is just about getting yourself into the rhythm of the race. In the half marathon, it's a, a little bit different. They, uh, they will have an element of that. See there already, a uh, few have uh, dropped off the back. Uh, one of the Australians is back there. Tim Vincent there on the left-hand side of Australia, the 24-year-old from the Queensland University of Technology. He went to the uh, Universiad Cross Country Championships uh, last year in uh, Portugal. So too did uh, 
his teammate uh, Harry Bagley, also 24 years old and uh, going to the University of Adelaide. He's the one of those, I think, who's just dropped off the back of this main pack. They've decided to take a, a different uh, strategy in terms of pacing. Vincent uh, pretty much almost being forced to the front by the Chinese behind him. You can see there a wall of Ugandans across the front as well. Common tactic to line it up and try to dictate the pace by physically not allowing anybody through. So the rhythm has been established and uh, as you can see just getting uh, the muscles warmed up and uh, just getting into the rhythm testing out how your body feels they'll more or less have a, a fair idea of it from the warm-up uh, before the race and finally they're just deciding he's going to take a different route One of the Hong Kong athletes, uh, Chong Se Jung, 22 year old from the Hong Kong Shu Yen uh, University. He's uh, not got one of the faster personal bests in the race, but he's not the slowest either. He's deciding that he needs to just go at a, a slightly slower pace, and uh, he's been accompanied by the Norwegian Henrik Laukli from the NTNU. He's got a personal best that's a couple of minutes faster than his. So the Hungarian is in the back there as well. Uh, the man from the University of uh, Debrecen, uh, Attila Arani. Up front, though, it's still Alfasi who is out in front. All the Chinese look like they are in touch. So uh, Chen Chan Yu, Ma Rui, we saw beginning Ma Yuji. Wang uh, Kung Zhen and uh, Yang uh, Kegu. And as you can see, the crowd is already coming out to uh, cheer on the half marathoners. Tim Vincent there is uh, obviously feeling pretty good. He's going along at the front. in the background uh, just taking a look there in the green of South Africa Saddam Gumeda 25 role from the Val University of Technology I saw yesterday the uh, crowd was lined up four or five deep on the one kilometer course it won't quite be like that for the half marathon because it's a much larger area that it covers past uh, drink station and it uh, looks like that was one of the sponges as well. The bottles all thrown off. They'll all be recycled afterwards. Sustainability becoming more and more important now in uh, major championships and major games. Not least of which here at the World University Games. He's actually Limo out on that right-hand side. Has decided he uh, just needs a little bit of air. Once again, it's 25 degrees, but of course, as we go through the race, the temperature will steadily rise. And with uh, such high humidity, there will be a point where they start to suffer and it will be whittled away. All these athletes will come in here with uh, an idea of what their strategy will be, assuming that the race runs the way they want it to. Of course, you have to adapt to how you feel as well. Best races always listen to their body. And everybody at the moment going along at a nice pace at the moment.
We're inside the second largest city in Western China here in Chengdu, the provincial capital of Sichuan. You've probably heard of because of their outstanding uh, cuisine that they have in this area. It's the political, cultural, financial center of the region. And it's a region that is being uh, pushed and developed by uh, the government over here as they try to spread the wealth from the east and the south all around the country. It's one of the reasons why the World University Games came to this city in the first place to raise the profile. It's a, a city that is a, quite a major tourist destination for Chinese, not least of which because of the panda sanctuaries who are, which are in this area. And if, you've, uh, if you're walking around the streets, you can see evidence. The panda is actually the, uh, the official mascot, Jambu. Baby Lotus, as it translates into English. Ah, bang on schedule. Thanks for that. That's just one representation. There were four of them inside the stadium last night, all running down the back straight. Not in official competition, I hasten to add. So three and a half kilometers coming up to. Ten minutes of running so far. Little check of the watch by Chalimo. Just to make sure that he's going at the rate that he wants. A lot of these athletes would have been trying to replicate the uh, conditions that they're running in today. That will involve things like uh, wearing extra clothes when you're running. See uh, Tim Vincent there. Uh, might be interested in a personal best today, but uh, the trouble is with the humidity. The road conditions are, su are superb. They were saying how much they like these roads because they're dead flat. So it's really hard to set a personal best in Australia because of the camber. But here, it is absolutely billiard-like, billiard table-like. So it's, uh, it's ideal from that point of view. But unfortunately, the climate that they're having to run in is the opposite of ideal. Vincent, though, is clearly feeling okay. He's just gone out in front. He's having a bit of a stretch of his legs. Not too far short of his 25th birthday is Tim Vincent. He's in his first major international championships or games. He's uh, been out uh, on the roads this year, half marathon in uh, Launceston in June, he ran that in 103.17. He uh, took on the Gold Coast Marathon in July, which is not too long ago, about a month or so, and uh, ran a personal best 217.17 in that. That was his uh, marathon debut. Before uh, this year, he's uh, extensively on the track. Set a uh, personal best of 5,000 meters last year in Adelaide. now though has turned his attentions to road racing. So the women are already through 5K men are heading towards that way. seems quite happy to sort of lead them along although they are spread out across the road but so uh, you can see already that gradually people are dropping off Al Farsi we said that he probably wouldn't last at the front and uh, the man from Oman has uh, just dropped off the back Norwegian Loudly is trying to work his way back. They can see there in the blue and blonde hair. But uh, once you've been dropped, it can be quite hard to get back, particularly as the he's looking a bit laboured, and you can see how easily the people at the front are moving. I haven't mentioned Turkey yet. Three runners 
from them. They're having a terrific game. They picked up three gold medals yesterday in athletics. And their team made up this morning of uh, Atula Aslahan from the uh, Britlis Erin University, Seskin Achas from the Dickel University, and uh, Masum Digger. Says in Atas. It's been in good form. Picked up uh, the silver medal in the uh, 10,000 metres back on the second day of competition this week. If you're looking out for uh, Atas, he's uh, wearing bib number 160. They have got their names on the front of their, uh, their uh, bibs, though, and you can see. Uh, Frenchwoman is still out in front. Julia. Julia went through 5K in 13, 17 and a half minutes. And uh, she's, uh, well, she's a minute ahead of everybody else at the moment, which sounds a lot, but uh, as we've seen in uh, quite a few of the distance events this week, if you go out and get a big lead, that's one thing, but uh, a lot of them have then exploded later on and uh, disappeared all the way back into the pack and out the, the back of that pack. So uh, we will wait to see how this young French woman gets on as the race develops. Just saw a, a little uh, sign there of the Feng Shangdu Municipal Forest Park. Halfway will be at uh, around about uh, ten and three quarter kilometers there or thereabouts as it is Julien doing well they will be able to see her though as they go on this part of the section we're back on the walk section and Julien meanwhile is heading around the park it's a slightly awkward style she has of running but she's not really changed you can see her doing everything she could do to suck in the oxygen So when she went through 5K, she was on uh, 125, one hour 25 pace for the for the half marathon, which is kind of what we we're expecting. They're not really going to get near their personal best today. There's uh, a nice pack chasing on behind. The pack contains uh, the Chinese uh, Zhao Liu, Teresa Rochkova of the Czech Republic, Saki Harada. Ranu Kitagawa, as well as the likes of the uh, 10,000 meter silver medalist Yala Kilic Gurnan of Turkey. Karasu is also in there, so uh, both of the uh, 10,000 meter minor medalists are in that chasing pack, but at the moment out front it's uh, 
Melody Julia still there, 300 meters away now from uh, registering her 10 kilometer time. Looks as though she's uh, more or less kept the same pace for the second 5K that she did for the first. You can see there, I think her facial expression is just beginning to change. She's beginning to feel it. The humidity is beginning to have an effect that we said it would. She's got a minute to play with, but uh, the others will be assuming that she will come back to them. So you gamble this by the French woman. She's uh, gone for it. So she's uh, just tried to break away, create enough of a gap for the others to think about what they're doing in terms of the silver and bronze, but um, I wouldn't suggest that we've got there yet. Men's marathon, much younger in its race at the moment. They went through 5K. In 1607, led by Isaac uh, Chalimo, there, probably the lesser known of the uh, the Ugandans. A pretty big man for a uh, half marathoner. When you compare him to uh, the rest behind. See there in what looks like the fiery yellow T-shirt. That is uh, Sam Cheptegai of Uganda, 25 years old, from the Makerere University. He's got sort of blue cycling shorts on and uh, didn't finish the 10,000 meters. He'll be looking for better today. He went to the World University Cross Country Championships last year as well. And uh, a number of the uh, men who are in this field, and indeed in uh, the distance uh, events through the week have uh, all went to uh, Portugal last year for that event. I'm assuming that's a baby panda. A big baby panda. So then there's not much uh, being given away in terms of the team event yet because uh, quite a few teams have got the necessary three athletes in there. So uh, everybody keeping their powder dry at the moment, as you would expect. Just following a bit of a different pattern. But he's actually Mo just showing uh, signs there that he might just be interested in increasing the pace just a touch. About halfway... Uh, You'll start to get people thinking about making a break. 40-odd came off the start line. I'm trying to uh, inherit the title that was uh, won by Akira Aizawa of Japan last time out, who uh, led a Japanese 1-2-3 for the third university out in a row. So no surprise to, to know that the Japanese won the... Uh, team gold medal as well at all three of those events in 2015, 2017 and uh, 2019. South Korea, Chinese Taipei and Italy respectively. Just one previous winner of this title, if you include it when it was a marathon as well, has gone on to win an Olympic title. That was Huang Yong Cho of career who uh, won in a games record of 20 or rather of two hours 12 minutes and 40 seconds back in 
So Tadima at the moment, but his teammates are very much with him. The four Ugandans at the front of the pack. Sam Cheptegi, the only one not wearing what looks like an official Uganda top. So he's quite easy to pick out. The Indian athlete is uh, going pretty well still. That's uh, Arun Rathod. Bib number 127, 23 years old from the Salapur University. This is pretty much his first exposure to international competition. Outdoors uh, this year, he has run at 5,000 and 10,000 meters on the track. There's nothing to suggest that uh, he will be challenging for the honors at the end of this race, though. some real studies going into uh, distance running and how best for athletes to beat competition heat and specifically aimed at uh, northern Europeans who are not used to this kind of humidity it's hot across uh, Europe at the moment but it's the humidity that really makes the difference when you're running in Asia potentially lethal cocktail of high heat and humidity and strenuous exercise and dehydration can uh, really have an effect very quickly and uh, go into meltdown mid-race pretty quickly. I mean, our athletes have lost consciousness as a result of such conditions. Now, there is a real feeling amongst world athletics that uh, there is an urgent need to educate endurance athletes about the dangers for their health and performance that is posed by uh, such hot, such heat and uh, humidity. Working it into your training so that the body gets used to it. See there, the sun is now beginning to break through the cloud cover, which is only going to make it hotter still. There have been studies being made already by World Athletics, their health and science department. Uh, unbelievably it's a uh, it seems such an obvious thing doesn't it to, to check the weather find out the climate of where you're going but uh, according to world athletics there are still coaches and athletes who are a little naive in their uh, approach to uh, getting ready for uh, such conditions and of course it has uh, direct effects on health these men, though, at the moment, all going well. Tim Vincent is uh, now dropped on the back there. You can see there the tall man in green. He was up, out front in, uh, for a while early on, but he's decided to, to take a break on the back of the group at the moment and follow the men through. There's not been much wind at all this uh, week. That can be a double-edged sword when you're uh, marathon running. It's great if it's behind you and it blows the heat off your skin. It's not so much fun, though, if you're running into it. So then we're heading towards the halfway point and uh, we'll start to see soon some semblances of men thinking about a time to break away. The women's race, it was already decided kind of with uh, Julian breaking away almost from the start. The men, this is a much more classically run distance race on the roads. They'll just get to the halfway point and then start thinking about how they feel and when they think is the best time to make the break. Get it wrong and it can all go very wrong very quickly. There's the Estonian, Leonid uh, Latsapov, uh, being accompanied by the uh, Norwegian uh, Laukli. They're uh, working together 
to try to stay in touch with the main group that's in front. One of the Chinese looks like he's just dropping off the back of that uh, group, going through a bad section. Can't quite see who it is yet. In the walks yesterday, we thought maybe that the Chinese would... Uh, challenge the Turkish athletes but uh, it never worked out that way in the end and two very high quality performances in the wars from Turkey individually and uh, the two races kind of were a mirror of each other the uh, tactics used by the two Turkish winners very similar to each other it's a steady increase in pace and it gradually whittled the challenges down one by one so far, we have not got to that stage here with the half marathon. Tall figure of Ayatollah Aslahan of Turkey, you can see him there looming in the background, goes to the uh, Bitlis Eren University, he's a, a 65, nearly 66 minute man, 22 years old, and uh, the 5,000 meter European junior silver medalist uh, from uh, 2019. Uh, he has been doing uh, track work as well, this uh, this season and has decided to uh, take on the half marathon here at the World University Games. He's got considerable championship experience though already starting with the World Youth Championship back in 2017 and uh, has been to a major championship every year when COVID is allowed. Obviously it was all cancelled for a while. And the 22 year old at the moment is looking relatively comfortable. number of those sort of slogans around the uh, the city not least of which is Chengdu makes your dreams come true well I guess that depends on how you do in your actual event there's the individual uh, hydration point so this is where it's really important to spot your flag spot the uh, team member who's got it may have caught sight of uh, South Africans there uh, just handing out the um, the drinks and uh, on that uh, drink station is a uh, charity Motola Sane who uh, was actually a runner at the 2017 uh, World University Games in uh, Chinese Taipei You have to spot her with the long dreadlocks and uh, the little beanie hat that uh, she's wearing. Bubbly character. One of the missed stages. You see the different approach. Abdullah not interested at all in going through the mist and he runs all the way around the outside. Everybody else seems relatively happy to go through and uh, then the Turkish athlete comes back inside once more. Well, the Ugandans here now beginning to pace it out. And you can see they're beginning to move away. They are beginning to stretch out the group behind them. It's said when you get through halfway that uh, they start to go. Halfway reached in 31 minutes 40. So uh, they are going at a decent pace, particularly for the conditions. 63 minute pace at the moment that they're heading for. Gradually, one by one, they are beginning to lose the men behind them as the uh, race starts for real from this point.
Tim Vincent beginning to uh, suffer off the back there. So he's joined in a little group that includes uh, Cho Min Hyuk, 22 year old from the Kung Kuk University. He's actually Emo has a little look at his clock to see whether or not they are on track. They've just backed off again. Just testing out. You see this a lot in uh, marathon running, half marathon running. They'll go, they'll test, see who reacts, who's feeling strong, and drop back in again. Mo Farah was famous for it in 10,000 meter running, coming from the back to the front, bursting a little bit, having a little look to behind to see who was feeling good behind him and dropping back again. And you can see all the others have now gone back with them. And when they slow down, it gives that little chasing pack behind us that little bit of hope that they might be able to get back in control. That's the thing when you're struggling as those four are behind the main pack is it's all about holding on. It's all about trying to just manage your body. And then when you feel good again, you might be able to make it back into the pack. The South African there is uh, demonstrating that admirably there. He's now obviously feeling a little bit better and he's uh, trying to bridge the gap and uh, join the main pack once more. Surprising thing for me here is Aaron uh, Ratod there, the Indian in the middle wearing the black. He's uh, still looking very, very good. And he's been protecting himself as well uh, behind the leaders, so allowing them to take what win there is on these uh, fairly flaccid conditions. The only win really I've seen at all affecting the athletes this week was last evening. And even then it wasn't for very long. There's the women. You can see Julia has been rejoined now by three Turkish women. So uh, that attempt at a break early on has not worked. There's a Japanese in there as well. But this is looking good for the Turks in terms of the team race. Because if it stayed like this, they would win the gold. It's been a while since we've seen the women. So the Turkish women are, uh, well, there are some heavyweights uh, in there as well. Two of the medalists from the 10,000 metres in Ayala kilic Gurnan and Dera Kuna. Bersu Sabatan is in there as well. The thing with Bersu Sabatan is uh, how she's going to be feeling after taking on the 5,000 metres yesterday. So... Uh, you know, high, high competition one day and then suddenly you're into another one the next day and it's a half marathon to boot is, uh, is not easy. Meanwhile, the woman who is uh, actually pushing them on and the harder is the woman from the Osaka University of Arts, Hikaru Kitagawa. Just 21 years old. First major championships for her, for the woman who was fourth in the National Cross Country Championships in Fukuoka back in February. On the track, she has improved her 10,000 metres uh, personal best this year. Um, hasn't done so over 5,000 metres, though. And the half marathon has improved to a one, well, went under one 12 for the first time and one 11, all in the same race. And she's clearly feeling all right now. Japan with a very proud history in women's distance running. They have Olympic champions and world champions coming out of their ears. She managed to get hold of her personal water bottle. And uh, Kilic Gurnan also gets there as well. It's a little bit difficult when you've got uh, three athletes right next to each other from the same country all going for a water bottle. And there's only a couple of people who uh, are there to hand out the uh, drink stays. So uh, you can see that uh, I think it's uh, 
Derek forced to take some water from the the general water station. Julia, I'm not sure whether she managed to get her uh, her water station, but you can see that she's struggling now. She went off too fast. Had a feeling that was the case when she did, and not quite sure why they do that. You get a little bit, you, you feel good because the adrenaline of the start takes you away, and sometimes you've just got to rein yourself back in. And all of a sudden, we're down to three at the front. Kitagawa, Kilic going, and, and looks like. The other one is the other woman from that uh, 10,000 meters, uh, Dera Kuna, from the uh, Mus Alpaslan University. Kilic Gurnan herself is from the Agri Ibrahim uh, Sesen University. And all of a sudden, that was a real kick away. I mean, they have blown it apart there in a very, very short amount of time. Well, the race, as we said, starts in the second half and it is well and truly kicked off now. Similar tactics to the 10,000 metres. Kilic Konan leading it out, except that rather than a Chinese chaser this time, it's a Japanese one. Karasu looks like she is struggling a little bit now. Fatima Karasu in her first major championships. who picked up the bronze medal. She did a bulk of the work in that um, 10,000 metres, but she looks like she's struggling as they hit the bell. And having taken uh, the silver medal in the 10,000 metres, this is a real drive for home now. And Jana Kilic Gonan again employing similar tactics in this half marathon to the one she did on the track. And the big question is, can Kitagawa do the same thing to her that Jia Yu Yu did. Seneschal, the other Chan, um, French girl going along. At the first of the uh, Chinese, looks like uh, it is uh, Liu Jia. Or is it, no, it might be Neo Lia, the 23-year-old from the Singur University, the same university that uh, Jia Yu Yu goes to, the woman who won the 10,000 meters on the opening night of the athletics competition. Jakobitz is there, we saw her at the start, the German, there in the middle with the yellow cap. It's finding it hard as well. Behind her is Anja Fink in the green of Slovenia, 26-year-old from the University of Ljubljana. Just adjusting uh, the top of her vest. And uh, Michelle uh, Schwab, the Swiss girl, is also in that from the Swiss Distance University. 23 years old. There is Subatan, who we saw in the 5,000 meters. And the Ataturk University, the 25-year-old, bravely taken on the half marathon. Well, Mati de Seneschal is uh, around about 10th, 11th, uh, this battle with uh, Michel Schwab and uh, Niu Liu. There is the 10,000 metre champion. Not surprising perhaps that she's not in contention again here. Just enjoying being part of the World University Games, the 25 year old who's already a national heroine after that wonderful victory where she followed the two Turkish girls to the bell and then burst away from them and left them for dead. This time, though, she's just one of the also rounds running along at the moment in uh, around about 19th place. And we're 
through 15k in around about 53 minutes. The uh, pace has, has stayed relatively similar at the front, that is. Eighteen and a half minutes at the beginning. Uh, Eighteen and a half minutes again for the third five-kilometer split. Hear them, uh, the crowd encouraging you. Of course, with the names written on the front of the bibs these days, you can actually hear people shouting names now from the sides, they know who they are. So Anil Lua, the 23-year-old, we're hearing her name quite a lot, the woman who went to the Asian Championships back in 2018, the Asian Junior Championships, that is. This is only her second major championship outing, and uh, Gillich Conan has made a break again, and it uh, looks like she's now on her own, is she? When we get a track back, we'll be able to have a better impression Perhaps another piece of water. Heading into the last three, three and a half kilometers. And you can see there, since that uh, 10,000 meters, she's uh, got a bit of that uh, kinesthetic tape on the uh, right knee. So I guess she had a little bit of an issue after that long run on the track. Kitagawa there is behind her. She's not out of touch yet. But uh, Kilich Gurnan is doing a slightly better job of getting rid of the Japanese than she did with the Chinese at the beginning of the uh, week. I think it was Tuesday night, wasn't it, that uh, the athletics got underway. It's a brave uh, run in that 10,000 metres, and if anybody deserves uh, a gold medal after that, it will be here after you've run a half marathon as well. Through the miss station once more. Great innovation that the miss station in uh, modern day road running. And clearly, she's uh, still uh, looking at her clock. She's uh, obviously set out to do a certain time, and you're combining the tactics of uh, breaking away with the time that you want to do at the end of the race. That's what I mean about listening to your body and listening to the conditions, reacting to your competitors seeing how they are, so she's been testing out Kitagawa. And it looks as though Kitagawa might be getting further and further behind. This is a determined run for glory. From the woman from Turkey, Yana Kilic Gurnan, 26 years old. This will be the last time we see her. She'll be too old to uh, go into the next one, which will be in Germany, in the Rhine-Ruhr region. A real famous hotbed for football. And a real industrial centre of Germany. In a couple of years' time. Conan and Kilic Conan on her way. She still looks strong. There's uh, no visible pain, anything uh, stretched across her face. And... Uh, Looks like they keep, she constantly keep looking at her watch, though. I wonder whether that means she's beginning to drop behind uh, her schedule. Distance runners, they like their schedules. They like to win, but they also want to hit the time that they aim for. There's one of the lakes in the uh, central part we were talking about earlier. It's a beautiful place. This area of uh, the city is a, qu a pretty affluent area. There's been great efforts to try and uh, make things uh, a little less polluted. A lot of the cars here now, electric and uh, and hybrid, and you can easily spot them because the registration plates are different. If you've got a traditional car, it's blue. If you've got a, a more economically friendly or rather environmentally friendly car, then they're sort of green and white. Kitagawa is still there. And looks like she's upped her cadence just a bit, trying to catch up with Kilic Gurnan. 
Meanwhile, the men heading towards the finish line once more. We are coming up to the South African Mpshi. And straight past that. Keep going. Kitagawa here is hanging on valiantly. She looks in a little distress, but uh, she's fighting through it. Kilic Gonan here has not won it yet. This is a great race. Enjoy this because uh, this is going to be a fight by the looks of it until the end. Kitagawa looks as though she's growing in a bit of confidence. Further back, as you can see, in third place is uh, Fatma Karasu. Kitagawa, I mean, I might be foreshortening here, but it does look like she maybe is coming back. She's found a second wind. The break by the Turk has not worked. And the more that that gap stays the way it is, the more that uh, Kitagawa is going to grow in confidence. See a very different style, the long language style of the Turkish leader and a busier style, not just with the legs, but with the upper body as well, the way the shoulders are moving with Kitagawa. Well, how disappointing will this be for uh, the Turkish athlete if she tries to win gold in two distance events and ends up finishing second in both. And of course, as we said, when you go hard, you risk it. You try to go for glory. It can go the other way as well, and you can disappear as well, and it could all fall apart really fast. So you also have to keep an eye on looking after your medal as well. So here they come. Back onto the uh, walk course. Where there are toilets uh, just behind the camera. Of course, uh, you very rarely see athletes actually need them. And Kitagawa there is uh, beginning, still just inching her way towards her. Kitagawa then in the running building up 19 kilometers gone just a couple of kilometers to go who will break first this is the question meanwhile Fatma Karasu is uh, steadily going along her personal best actually is uh, one of the slowest in the field so this is a really good performance from her in this race Meanwhile, is uh, Gonan Kulic beginning to go away again? The sustained pace. And maybe Kitagawa is hurting again because that gap looks like it's grown to me. Fascinating duel of not just physical endurance but mental capacity as well. Belief. Kilic Gonan has laid her cards on the table and she is fully committed to it and she's going away again. Kilic Gonan here inside the last kilometre or so is uh, striding away to gold once more. She may well have broken the Japanese. Karasu wants to know whether her bronze medal is safe. I'm afraid I can't tell you that at the moment because our system at the moment is about five kilometres behind where the ladies are on the track. But uh, we will get another reading in just a few moments' time. And we reach 20k. Again, Kitagawa trying to dig in once more. She's running out of time, though. We're heading towards the final kilometre. Kilic Gonan still going along. Still looking relatively comfortable. Kitagawa has looked uncomfortable for the last five kilometers, and yet she's still hanging in there. Trying to make it four Japanese wins in a row. Three 
three Japanese wins in a row. It's four in the men's if it happens. However, the women, the last time they went to university, uh, two World University Games without winning was uh, 1999 and 2001. Their domination of this event has steadily grown. They've had uh, bronze medals in the last six World University Games. The silver medal in uh, five of the last eight and the gold medal, as we said, well, they uh, never go more than two since right there at the beginning without winning. Kilic Gonan trying to win a first medal for Turkey in the half marathon in the women's event. And she's trying to make it gold. And again, she you can see there, she's just pounding it out metronomically. And uh, Kitta Gower again, looks like the gap has just grown steadily once more. Battle of wills between these two athletes. One last chance for hydration, perhaps. Last kilometer. Kitty Gower, they're not interested in the drink stations now. They've committed all the way to the end of the race. But will it be Turkey or will it be Japan? Kitagawa coming once more. Turkey looking for their sixth gold medal of the athletics program. Kitagawa though is coming once more, heading towards that last cooling mist station. Now the gap may be, I mean, it might be foreshortened again. It's difficult to tell when you're looking back at them, but no, it's definitely foreshortening. And here comes the Japanese. Kitagawa has let rip rear re with a, a burst towards the end of the race, and now they're next to each other. This will be dispiriting for Kilic Gurnan. She doesn't have much of a sprint. Kitagawa will have grown in confidence, and now she's the favourite to win this title, and she moves in front. Kitagawa on the march. And away she goes, and it's going to happen to Kilic Gurnan again. Gia, Yu Yu, went past her late on in the 10,000 metres, and now Kitagawa has done it to her in the half marathon. Kitagawa is going to come away and the Japanese domination of women's half marathon running at the World University Games is going to stretch again. Kitagawa striding for the line. And after the victories of Yuki Munisha and Yuka Suzuki in 2017 and 2019, it is Kitagawa in 2023 the World University Games half marathon champion. A magnificent race. Kilic Conan comes through to take a second silver medal of the week. It's silver for the Turkey, their first medal in this event. Another really brave run from Yala Kilic Conan, but it's the silver medal again. And it looks like it's going to be a repetition as well of the bronze medal with Turkey also taking that too. Coming towards the line. Then it's Fatma Karasu. struggling she's found it hard she's got tape on her shin as you can see which is, looks like it's coming off but uh, it doesn't matter the line is going to come to her in time Fatma Karasu takes the bronze medal
Looks like today's uh, Hochkova of uh, Czech Republic was coming across the finish line there for uh, fourth place. Joy, though, for uh, Hikaru Kitagawa, the latest Japanese winner of this women's title in the women's half marathon. And they're all coming in. First Chinese coming into view and there is the early leader from France Julia coming in a lot further down I think she rather shot her bolt too early in the race and uh, suffered for it later on Inaiga of Japan or comes across as well Turkey I think will be favorites to win the gold I think in the team event And I think they have pretty much wrapped that up because Dada Kuna has already come over the line in fifth. So Turkey will win the team gold. And speaking of which, there are two Turks there leading the men's race. Assuming this is the front. So then Omar Dorsezin Atas is one of them. And uh, Ayatollah Aslan is the other Turk there. Just coming up to one of the Chinese girls. It looks like Mar, is it, who they've gone past. So then Aslan. Atas of the Dickel University, Aslan of the Bitlers Eren University. I think that's Yang Kei Gu, uh, 23 year old Chinese, grabbing his uh, water bottle from, uh, or his hydration bottle from his team. They're up to uh, 20 kilometers and pass, and a little bit of teamwork then from the two Turkish athletes. Sezgin Atas, the uh, European Junior Championship bronze medalist at 10,000 meters back in 2017, and picked up the silver medal in the 10,000 meters just a few days ago. two looking as though they're going to fight it out between themselves to see which of them can become the uh, first Turkish winner of uh, this race indeed the same as for the women's race Turkey have never finished on the podium Japan have won the last three titles here since uh, Sibalwe uh, Mzazi won for South Africa ahead of Steven Makulka in uh, Kazan back in 2013. Atas is making the burst. So then, inside the last 500 meters or so, Atas makes a burst. Aslan, though, is not dead yet. Still there. It's Atas looking for uh, two medals. Aslan, though, is still looking interested. And they come up, and it's going to be Atas who wins it. Aslan in second place. And so it's Sezgin Atas who becomes the first Turkish champion in the men's World University Games half marathon. Bronze medal goes to China. But it's gold and silver to Turkey. They finally get there 
after losing out in the individual 10,000 meters, they've got the gold medal in the half marathon. So they, indeed it was Yang Keigu, the 23 year old who has got the uh, bronze medal for China. So the Shanghai University of Sport would be pretty pleased with their 23 year old undergraduates. A joy at the other end in the uh, gold and silver department for Turkey. So again, more medals for Turkey as more athletes come across the line behind. The men and the women finishing together at the moment. Little message for the folks back home. So Atas from the Dickel University becomes the champion. And uh, there comes Isaac Chalimo, who was uh, leading quite a long time in the first half of the race. And he finally comes across the race. He looks absolutely out of it. His teammate comes over the line. A couple of fast finishing Chinese as well. And the Turks will be uh, celebrating together. Looks like Turkey will have won the team event as well, so that means they will have won both team golds. As the rest of the field piles in behind them, looking to uh, get as quick a time as possible. Kenyan, Kelvin, Kim Tai, Chepsagor just coming across the line for the Edgerton University, the 22-year-old who we also saw in the 10,000 metres earlier in the week. He tried to pace that a little bit earlier on as well before uh, fading away somewhat towards the end of the race. So Yang, the happier of the two Chinese, Ma just congratulating him. Coming across the line was the other Ugandan, Brian Wangwe, 25 year old from the Makerere University. And a little high five with the Korean that has been accompanying him round the course. 